Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Network of Michigan show. My name is Ike Engelbaum, and I'm the founder of our organization, and we've been meeting for almost five or oh, fifty years. I'm getting tired, <laughs> but I'm going to keep going. We've met all over southeast Michigan in the five county area, if, that, if that's uh, eligible. We currently have Zoom meetings every other Tuesday from 12 noon to 1 p.m. And in-person meetings three times a week in the evenings, Saturday mornings. But if you'd like to join us, by all means, feel free to call me at any time on my toll-free number, 888-489-8980. That's 888-489-8980 if you wish to speak to me directly but if you just want to check out our website, which unfortunately right now is under construction, but we hope to have it constructed. But we've got a lot of great information if you're serious about wanting to start your own business or build your own business. I'm excited in that our organization has connected with so many super talented people. And uh, I always encourage people to get together and network. You have these pins that I'm wearing. One's the Rotary Club, one's the Optimist Club. I encourage you to join up with me. And if you mention my name, Ike, you may actually get in for free. <laughs> you can get in free anyway. But I enjoy talking to successful entrepreneurs and I encourage them to share their successes and their failures. Because as, it is, as it has been jokingly said, you should learn from the mistakes of others because you'll never live long enough to make them all yourself. And I try to encourage people to surround yourself with people that can help you. And I'm really excited about having our executive communications director here with me today, Lisa Boynet. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and a powerful guy. Guess what? His name is Darren Powers. Did, did, How did you? <laughs> <laughs> wow! Is that serendipity or something? I don't know. I learned that word yesterday, and I thought I'd use it in a sentence. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to have you get to know them through our interview today, and hopefully motivate you to get involved in something that's vital in motivation and in coaching. And uh, Lisa Boynet is actually a transformational life coach. Lisa, what is a transformational life coach? <laughs> well, I help people transform their lives. I guide them and help them discover what is already inside them, bring that to the surface so that they can succeed and set goals and reach those goals for themselves. So you help people when they're deciding where where am I going, what am I doing, or what have you. You know, I cannot stress strongly enough how valuable it is to have a coach. I'm not going to talk about the Tigers. <laughs> I don't want to get anybody <laughs> depressed. <laughs> but, but they are now attributing the successes they have because of coaching. And uh, with you is another fellow entrepreneur. In fact, I'd like to designate you as an ambassador of the entrepreneurs. Now, are you ready, Darren? I'm ready. You did Thank not you. know Do I, this is good. Me in? <laughs> <laughs> Hold up your head. All right. We, we just need a Bible. But instead, maybe we could use your book. <laughs> That's close enough. <laughs> Future Vision Six Steps to Harness Your Power and Achieve Goals in the New Normal. And boy, oh boy. They keep saying new normal. I don't know what that really means, but I know that we're in such a challenging time that we've never had before. And uh, frankly, coaching right now is probably is more critical than ever before. And uh, Darren, to your credit, uh, you are a veteran of the Air Force. Is that right? That's correct. Right. And uh, you also went through the Dale Carney School uh, 
Uh, and, and, I was a Carnegie trainer for 10 years. 10 years. Taught leadership, sales, marketing, management, human relations, communications. Yeah. Uh, did it privately, did it for corporations. And uh, it, was, it was great, it was great. It's, it's, it's like what Lisa just said. She said she's a coach to bring out the best in what's already inside people, and that's what the Carnegie course did. It brought mm -hmm. out what's already there. We're not manufacturing anything new. What we're doing is trying to create an environment where you can bring out the best. Mm -hmm. That's what the book is about, too. It's bringing out the best in that person. Right. And uh, Lisa, you were into something so vital, and uh, we always talk about uh, the youth being our future. That's right. So uh, as a transformational coach, you've got all kinds of different programs. You work with seniors as well as yep. young people, correct? Yep. Yes, I'm the founder of a program called Teen Potential, and it's a program that helps teens through mindfulness practices learn how to reduce their stress and anxiety, and it gives them positive, healthy coping skills so that they can handle all the different uh, stressors that they encounter in their day-to-day -day life in today's world. There's been clinical studies that have proven that the stress for teenage, the level of stress for teenagers is higher than that for most adults. When you consider all of the things that our teenagers are up against today, getting the right grades, participating in multiple school activities, having a job, playing a sport, you know, having to get the right scores on their SAT, and as they look forward, the first thing they see in their future is this enormous college debt. And it's just, it's overwhelming for them just to even think about their future and giving them tools that are healthy, productive, positive tools to help them deal with that stress is, is critical in today's world, I think. And um, because on their own, they're, they're coping, but it's usually not very healthy and sometimes it's even dangerous coping behaviors. And we want to give them tools so that they don't have that. Right, I, you know, uh it is so vital to uh, have some, a professional you can open up to. And uh, this is my own pet peeve, but I was at a social gathering the other night, and uh, uh, some of the people there had young teenagers. They were about to get a driver's license and say, oh, I'm going to teach them. <laughs> and I why would you, as a parent, want to go there, OK? Go to have a regular professional driver, and to add to it, they were describing some of the shenanigans that were going on while they're training them. So uh, this is basic stuff in, in training, and uh, I just wondered, can you share an experience that uh, you started out? First of all, uh, what's the uh, you get a call? What happens? How do you start that initial conversation? Well, we usually try and start off with a self-assessment. So I would ask a student, you know, where are you? What's going on in your life? What are things in your life that aren't working for you? And what are things in your life that are working for you that you want more of? And then we try and work together to come up with a plan to help them minimize or solve or resolve, depending on what the situation is, the things that aren't working for them. And then we give them ways to help improve, increase, augment any of the things in their life that are working for them. And it's more of working away from the negativity bias that we all have and working more towards positive neuroplasticity and leaning towards the positive in things. Um, any situation in and of itself is actually neutral. It's our perception of that situation that gives it its meaning. And so if we can help the teen see all the situations that they're facing in a more with a positive lean, then things start moving smoother for them. They have a more positive outlook on life and they just feel more empowered in making choices in what they're doing in their day-to-day -day life. So uh, that initial consultation is complimentary, I yes, assume? of course. And uh, how long does that take? Uh, um, not too long, usually between 30 to 60 minutes. Of course, it depends on how um, open and uh, forthcoming the teen is. If they, have, you know, if they really have a lot that they want to talk about, then it can last up to an hour. If they're you know, more kind of succinct in their answers, then it would be closer to like 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then you meet on a routine basis, I assume? Yeah, with the teens, I like to um, 
keep them in a group program because there's a, they learn a lot from each other. They really gain a lot from hearing each other's experiences. And one of the biggest things I think that teens get out of working in a group situation is that they don't feel as alone. They can go, oh, I struggle with that too. And somehow or other, when we know that somebody else is struggling with the same thing that we do, somehow it makes that struggle a little bit lighter to carry around. And so there's just that synergy that happens in a group that you don't get on a one-to-one -one basis. That, uh, with adults, I tend to work more on one-on-one, -on -one, but with the teenagers, I like to work in that group situation because it really empowers them. And what happens with teenagers a lot of times is they'll look at somebody based on the way they're dressed or that kind of thing, and they make a decision. They go, oh, I know that person. Mm -hmm. And when you get them in a group and they can share, like, you know, oh, my mom's really sick, and the other one goes, oh, my mom's really sick too, it breaks down those barriers and they say you're a person just like me and they start to be able to see each other as equals and be more open and kind and considerate and compassionate with the other people around them. Now uh, from your experience uh, how many sessions do you advise? So the program that I take my teens through is an eight week program 90 minutes each. Um, I have done it, you can do it in a 16-week program at 45-minute sessions as well as to break them down into shorter sections. But um, eight weeks, 90-minute sessions, once a week is generally what we need. Mm -hmm. And uh, since the COVID deal, uh, have you had the Zoom meetings? Or? Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, in-person works much more um, personal. <laughs> it, it's much more personal. There's the whole thing with body language that happens and those kinds of things that even if we don't necessarily know how to read body language, we pick up on it. And so the teens are, are you know, feeding off of each other and the positive energies that they give off, which, it, you know, you can see the smile on somebody's face on Zoom, but you don't get the same interaction as you do in person, face to face with people. So this fall in September, when I start my next session, um, definitely in person this time around. Uh, uh, right. Well, that's great. I'll tell you, uh, I think uh, one of the lessons that we've learned is how valuable it is for us to see each other in person. Uh, Absolutely. I mean, even the houses of faith, uh, you know, it's okay. Although I must admit, it's very convenient if you don't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, but you still need that human being to human being interaction. And yeah. without it sounding like a commercial, uh, that's why we have the entrepreneurs network meetings either on Zoom or in person because really reading a person's body language means a heck of a lot. And uh, uh, with uh, unfortunately so many sad situations that you uh, were reading about these days, have you uh, had to deal with troubled young people and getting them out of that sort of negative attitude to life? Yes, I mean, there's an enormous amount of stress on our teens today, and they've encountered things that the gen this generation of teenagers that other adults, and even you know young adults in their early 20s didn't encounter. When you look at the number of school shootings that have happened in the past year and that kind of thing, there's certain aspects of their day-to-day -day life that we've never had to deal with, and, and they're just children. You know, they right. feel grown up, uh, they think right. they're grown up, but they're still children, they're still developing, and they're still learning how to handle the world, what, how to, to deal with things that come up. And then, you know, we hit them with something, a major traumatic experience, and it, it is definitely a, has a big impact on them. There's, you know, cyberbullying that they experience regularly. So there's all kinds of um, little, Dif difficulties that we as who are now adults have not encountered that you know giving them the right tools teaching them a lot of what I do is around mindfulness I teach and Darren also teaches this EFT tapping which helps bring down the fight-or-flight response which helps reduce the adrenaline in the cortisol levels in the body that makes them more it makes you able to think more clearly to make wiser decisions it allows you to respond instead of react to a situation, and so with that, even just a, a minute, not even a minute, a, a second of thinking before you act 
can stop you from saying something that you don't want to do, cr committing an act that you don't want to do. It, it, it's very powerful just to have that moment of mindfulness pause. Mm -hmm. And so that's a very, you know, just a, it just takes a second to stop you from doing something that could change, for a teenager, it could change their lives. Instead of hitting post <laughs> on that infl right. inflammatory post that they just wrote and taking a second thinking, do I really want to post that? It can change their life. But even with social media, when the kids are absorbing this and they're comparing themselves to what they're seeing, these pictures, and a lot of them are not measuring up and it's contributing to suicide, is it not? It, it is. There's definitely been a rise in depression and suicidal tendencies in teenagers. So it is, is that fluff stuff? Uh, it's definitely not fluff. Definitely and not. Uh, you actually uh, give them like a workbook type uh, yep, format? There is there's definitely a workbook that they work with. Um, I give them what is called on your own practices because it's not homework, they're life skills that they're learning. So they're practicing. And it's a practice that they learn starting now that they can use for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. Mindfulness, meditation, EFT tapping, all of those kinds of tools that, that I'm giving them in their toolbox, these are lifelong tools. It's not a homework assignment that I have to learn this week and then I'm going to forget it. Mm -hmm. It's building them up so that they can enter adulthood better prepared and, and better equipped to handle what's going to come next. And likely they're not going to get this in school, are they? No, this is not something that we teach in school yet, but maybe. You never know. We yeah. keep our well, fingers crossed. Lisa, <laughs> Lisa, actually, we, we talked before we got on the air, that's what she's planning on doing, is approaching schools. So if you get the message, folks, if your school you feel would benefit, Lisa is available, right? <laughs> and with a name like Boyne, that means good, right? Exactly. <laughs> and speaking of good, Darren, uh, I uh, wanted to have you give us a little uh, description of what prompted you to write this book and Give us a walkthrough of the book. <laughs> well, I, I guess you could say I do the adult version of what Lisa does. Yeah. And I think what she does is extraordinary. And you're leading the way. And I absolutely encourage you to go into the schools. That's where I'm headed for the staff, though. I would like to yeah. do things like this for the staff. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, so what, what got me into this, into, into the, uh, doing the book Future Vision, was uh, when lockdown happened. Um, I, was, I was running a video marketing business, and, uh, and I had a stack of clients ready to start. I went to California, came back, I was going to start them up, and then lockdown happened, and everything went away. So I thought, oh, I'll do okay, because I'm introspective, and I like to learn, and uh, I'm going to learn Tai Chi. I have martial arts, many black, black and brown belts, and, uh, but I've been wanting to do something good for myself, and I thought, I'm going to learn Tai Chi. So as I'm going through some of these movements on YouTube, which is my university, <laughs> you, the University of YouTube. Uh, I'm, I'm going through these movements and I'm starting to think to myself, God, you know, people are going to have a rough time with this. They're going to have a lot of stress. And, man, they're going to not necessarily know how to deal with themselves. They're going to look at themselves in the mirror. They're going to go like, what am I doing home? And this is not... This is not normal for me to be at home like this, away from the office, away from work, um, in lockdown. And sure enough, the Harris Poll turns out that... Uh, uh, they did a poll for the uh, American Psychological Association and found out that uh, after COVID or during COVID, 78% of the people felt stress, right? They felt stress, they, 29 pounds average overweight, uh, stress, um, uh, addiction for alcohol, for drugs. Uh, a lot of things have happened as a result of COVID. So I wrote the book because it was based on a course I actually did 20 years ago. It was called Future Vision Techniques for Planning and Achieving Your Goals. Ford Motor had picked it up and they wanted it as a leading edge kind of program to help people to think more clearly, to uh, create goals and, and make things happen more precisely. And so I had been working on, I'd been coaching people one-on-one -on -one over the years and uh, I upgraded the technology and I thought, you know what? I need to put that into book form so that people could easily read it and then I created the uh, the workbook so people could actually apply it and um, and so that's the reason why I wrote it to help people post pandemic you know and then we had the great resignation there's people thinking about starting up businesses the entrepreneur network you know they need some step-by-step -step, uh, hold your hand kind of ideas mm -hmm. from the ground floor 
through execution or whether they're already at a high point and want to go take it to a higher point, that's what the workbook and the book does. Right. Well, I understand there's actually a six-step process that you have? There is a six-step process. Yeah, do you want to... It's based around three key ideas. N number one is direction. You know, what direction I'm removing. The great resignation, you know, people leaving their jobs, people um, changing their situations, they're looking for direction, right? Or if they've already had a direction, maybe they want a new direction. So the, the book looks at what is our, what's our direction or where do I want to go? What makes the most sense for me? Rather than just choosing something randomly, how can I get to the core of who I really am? Back to Lisa, what she said, you know, she's not necessarily adding anything to them. She's releasing what's already there and creating tools and environment where people can be at their best. So the first part's direction. The second part really has to do with mindset. And the, the, the fancy word that everybody's using right now is resilience. Uh, and resilience takes time to build up. If you do the kinds of exercises that Lisa and I both do, like emotional freedom technique, and you do it on a daily basis, and you combine that with breathing and some basic techniques, you can build your mind up. You can become stronger and more resilient to stressors that are going on around us. And then the third one is the environment. Like Lisa's creating the environment for these teenagers, uh, what I'm suggesting is that you examine your environment and you get rid of the negative stuff that's bringing you down and surround yourself with the people that are bringing you up and create the kind of environment that will lead you in the direction you need to go. It's very simple. This is not difficult and I hardly have any 10 letter words in this book. <laughs> I, because I wanted everybody to be able to, anybody that picked it up, to be able to profit from it. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like it's well thought out and I uh, commend you uh, that so many times you read uh, good information but the key is now what what do I do now so you've taken right. it to that next to the next step so uh, future vision is available uh, I assume through the usual channels you can always contact us through the entrepreneurs network of Michigan and uh, are you uh, uh, open to actually maybe doing some uh, workshop type things? We might consider doing that through uh, uh, our uh, meetings every once in a while. We can take one of these Absolutely. chapters. Absolutely, yeah, we'll do a, we'll do uh, a workshop uh, through the Entrepreneurs uh, Network. And that, w that would be wonderful because uh, with your starting and you're continuing, heck, what more or is there? Or are collaborating, right? <laughs> right? You know, right. you provide the environment, we provide the tools. Right. You know, you're talking about uh, the environment and all. Reminds me about the uh, young kid that comes home with a terrible, terrible report card. And the father looks at the report card and uh, obviously very concerned and upset and he's, and he's child picks up on and says, so tell me, Dad, do you think my poor grades are due to my genes or the environment? <laughs> okay. Well, well, one of the things also uh, that I uh, really am so grateful to both of you are here because it's, as they say in the biz, a segue. You're a younger uh, area of trying to get people started. And it's unforgivable that schools don't figure out a way to incorporate the basics. And I'm not trying to sound Pollyannish, but if you don't have the right type of coaching, let's face it, teachers are trained to do their particular course and what have you. But meanwhile, we're talking about the brain. And likewise, as an adult, uh, I get a tick out of it. It reminds me of how many adults ask young kids, so what do you plan on doing? Do you know what the real reason that they do that? Because they themselves have not figured out what they want to do. That's why they figured that maybe they'll get a prompt. And the truth of it is that if you have got people like you who have actually tried these programs, implemented these programs, you can actually make a positive difference in people's lives. I'll give you an example. When I was, uh, when I was teaching the seminar version of this, this action guide, I had a woman who was uh, studying for a uh, law exam, and uh, she was really stressed about it. And at that time, I didn't have EFT. Uh, 
but I did have the program. And so one of the things that we did in the program is we went through a dream list. We created a dream list of everything you'd ever like to create in your life. And most people, it's very, very difficult to do something like that because we're, we're, thought, we're taught to think in a very narrow band. What are you going to do with your life? And that's what you train for, and that's what you do. It doesn't end up that way. You, you do many things in your life. Uh, but when it comes to direction in your life, I think it's good if you take a few moments and create a dream list. And in that dream list, you go outside your comfort zone where you don't normally go and you think about things that you could become or that you could do uh, so that you can stretch your imagination, stretch your mental comfort zone, your emotional comfort zone. And then when you come back in and do some of the goal setting exercises, you're working from a much larger palette of possibility than just, well, I was thinking about being a nurse or I was thinking about being a, a lawyer. Anyway, so she's thinking about being a lawyer, and, she's, a, and she's, not, she's not sure about that. She goes through this list, and she decides, you know, I want to go to Israel. I want to, I want to go uh, look at my roots. Be uh, before, you know, and all her brothers and, and sisters are doctors and lawyers, right? And so she goes to Israel, she comes back, and she's thinking about her life, and after having done the dream list, she, she sits down with her parents, she goes, I do not want to take the law exam. I don't want to be a lawyer. I would rather do something else. And they were okay with it, but she had to be okay with it first. She had to explore what was possible and, and try some new and different things. And I think that it's really important for us, especially now with the way, with all the stress, all the change, all the things that are happening, it's important for people to dream and be creative and learn some of these skills that, that we teach so that you can navigate your life to be something you want to be that's more you and not what somebody else thinks should be you. Hmm. Uh, do you uh, have any particular tip that you feel might be helpful from Yes, different? absolutely, absolutely. Right now with all the stress, I mean, you know, we've got the COVID stuff, the COVID fallout. We've got the uh, great resignation. We've got the war over in Ukraine. Um, we've got inflation going crazy, right? When you wake up in the morning, it's really important to examine that first thought. I think it's, it's important to have a future vision, where you want to be some years down the road. And the difference between a, a vision, future vision, and maybe a goal, a goal is a little more time bound, it's going to be more, it's closer to you, it's more precise. A future vision, you're going to see the end, you're going to know what that's like at the end, but you're not going to quite be there. So when you wake up in the morning, it's great to have a future vision. But if you don't have a future vision for your life because you haven't done the homework, or maybe read one of these books, or taken one of Lisa's classes, or co been coached by her, if you haven't done that, then start with gratitude. What are you grateful for? Because that sets the tone for the day. And I know myself, if I don't make myself either think of my vision, what I'm trying to create in my life, uh, or what I'm grateful for, I'm going to opt for the problems. Oh, man, inflate. i got to go to the store, and mm -hmm. oh, man, the prices on <laughs> salmon are like, they're double. I can't believe this. What is going on in this world? <laughs> you know, and boom, I'm off to a negative spiral. Right, right. Start on a positive note, and only you can do it. Nobody can do that. Nobody can take your vitamins for you. Nobody can do your push-ups. You have to do that. And if you need help, as right. you say, get a coach. Right. I'm a coach. Right. you got a coach here. You're a coach. We're all coaches. <laughs> <laughs> well, and unfortunately, we run out of time. And I do not want to leave without my favorite parting thought. And you're going to see how my parting thought is so apropos to what we just discussed about dreams and goals. And that is, if you really want to get anything done in life, you'll find a way. And if you don't, you'll find an excuse. And there is no excuse for not achieving your dreams and goals in America, because it is the greatest country in the whole world. Remember, a goal is just a dream with a deadline.